With the amount of time that I've put into Enshrouded so far, I figured now is a good time for me to instill some of this wisdom that I've learned through my trial and error of playing this game. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite tips that I've learned while playing Enshrouded that I think are going to really help you guys out. Now, as far as these tips goes, you guys don't have to worry about me repeating a bunch of the same things that a lot of other people have done because there's quite a few tips and tricks videos out there. So I feel like I did a pretty good job of coming up with my own kind of unique tips that not a lot of people are talking about. So for our first one, I feel like this one is going to save you guys a ton of time, and that is marking off the flame altars when you guys have visited them already. So everyone knows, or if you guys don't know already, when you guys interact with these flame altars, you will get sparks, and these sparks are required to progress your flame. And currently as it stands right now, the game actually does not mark these flame altars once you visit them before. And there's going to be a point in the game when you're going to need a lot of these sparks to upgrade your flame. So to save yourself from going back to these flame altars that you've already visited before and you can't tell which ones you have and haven't, I think the best solution is to create a marker on the ones that you visit. And in my game, I put a green flag marker next to the ones that I've visited. So you guys can clearly see here on my map which ones I have and have not been to. And trust me on this one, the first time you guys go back to a flame altar which you've already visited before, you're gonna be really frustrated. If you guys don't know where to put your skill points, I would definitely say for the time being, invest points into Endurance. Now this is regardless of whatever class or build you're trying to play in this game, I think every single build definitely needs to have some points into Endurance. I don't care if you're playing a tank or a glass cannon mage, you guys definitely need to be able to sprint. And I would even go as far as to say, invest in this skill tree to get all the way up to this point here, which is going to give you a 50% refresh rate on your stamina. Having this just feels so much better. When it comes to combat, one of the most important things you guys need to understand is that different types of enemies are resistant to different types of attacks or spells. So I would highly recommend that you guys go out there and get a couple of different weapon types of whatever you're using. For example, I like playing a mage with wands, so I'm always going to carry a fire wand and or a ice or lightning wand. This way, whenever I'm attacking an enemy, anytime my spells are resistant, I'll just swap to another one which ends up being very effective. One of the quickest ways to increase the power of your character is to invest more skill points. And the best way to get that is by obviously leveling up and then also going out and knocking down those corrupted roots. Obviously in this clip here, I didn't get the skill point because I've already gotten it, but every time you do chop down these corrupted trees, you will get a skill point. This one might not make sense to some people because we have these spires, but I would say I would put down multiple bases around the map in different locations so that way you guys have plenty of places to fast travel to get around the map quickly. In my game I kind of set them up in the far corners of the map because I felt like that just made sense but you guys can do whatever you want. This is a really important one and that is to just craft a ton of bandages. Enemies hit really hard in this game and I always found myself just on the brink of dying so you guys definitely want to be carrying multiple bandages for your characters. If you're looking to get a head start into the quote unquote end game of the early access and just get these kind of like higher tier quality materials and crafting and things like that, you definitely want to start a farm early. And if there's one flower I would highly recommend you guys start farming and just farm a crap ton of, that is the flax flower. These guys are kind of hard to find out in the world and they require a ton of these to turn them into linen, which you need to craft I guess higher quality armor and stuff like that. So definitely farm those early and often. This next one kind of goes hand in hand with the crafting multiple bases across the map, but that is to unlock the ancient spires as quickly as possible. For those of you who already have been playing the game for a while, you know exactly why this is on my tip list, but for those newer players, these ancient spires are going to act as fast travel locations for you, where you can glide quickly down from them to get around the map really fast. So the faster you guys unlock these ancient spires, the faster this game is going to open up to you and just feel so much better. Another useful tip that I think is really important in this game is to find ways to cheese combat. Now this one is going to mainly apply to ranged players, but I would say try to find ways where you can, you know, attack enemies when they can't attack you back, right? You know, climbing up above them so they can't hit you, or jumping across a bridge and shooting them from the other side. It might be a little bit harder for melee players, but in a lot of locations there are these snap traps on the ground, so definitely try to kite enemies into those to stun them and get some free hits on them. And our last tip is going to be more about certain materials being really easily farmable. So for example, if you guys want to farm up a lot of dirt, the best way to do that is to farm mud. Mud has a ton of dirt in that and it's really quick to farm up. And then also, if you guys want to get some twigs, instead of running around spamming the twigs on the ground, I found the best way to actually farm them or gather them is by harvesting bird nests. There's a bunch of other materials like this in the game, so just go around and experiment. 
So that is gonna do it for this video. If you guys had any questions or if you have any tips that you think didn't make this list but would be really good, feel free to post them in the comments section for other players to check out. And if you guys enjoyed this one, let me know by leaving a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you guys would like to support me and the work that I do here, consider clicking that join button at the top of my page and subscribing for only a dollar. Thanks again for watching. I'm still solo and I'll see you guys in the next one.